Hey there friends and welcome to another edition of Quick Tip Tuesday and today I want to talk to you about natural ways to keep your yard and garden weed free. The first one I want to talk about is probably the most common way that people try to keep weeds down and that's mulch. And there are lots of different types of mulch out there um, and they all have some upsides and some downsides. The first one I'm going to talk about is straw. Straw is like a byproduct of mainly the wheat industry. So you get the plants and then um, you take out the grain part of it and then you have all of the leftover stalks. The main thing that you want to look for if you're going to use straw in your garden is that it's chemical free because if it's you know been used in an agricultural setting where people have used like glyphosate or something else on that wheat or whatever it is the straw is coming from and it has those chemicals tainted on it when you go to put it in your yard, yard or garden it's going to make it to where it's not going to make your garden plants grow. So that's one thing you mainly want to make sure you're watching out for when you use straw. But otherwise it is a good mulch. Um, I use it around my strawberries which is actually where strawberries got their name is from the mulch that people used um, around them and it works really good. It does mold a little bit so I use it in a setting where I'm going to be watering each plant individually rather than from a sprinkler or something where it waters in whole area and that helps a lot. So it lasts the whole season without breaking down and molding or anything like that. So that's the first one. The second one is wood chips. Wood chips are a lot of um, what you buy in a garden center when you buy a big bag and it says mulch. It's just wood chips that have been dyed a certain color. These work really good around trees and shrubs and things like that, but you don't want to use them in your actual vegetable garden. The main reason is because they're going to get mixed in the soil and you don't want that. Long story short, when, you're, when you have something that's actually breaking down, um, something is composting in a sense, it's going to rob nutrients from the soil and the plants around them while it's breaking down and then once it's actually fully broken down then it adds the so you know the nutrients back to the air to the soil so if you actually have the wood chips in the you know garden and then you do get an occasional weed and you pull it out and you have a hole where the weed was and then the wood chips fall in it's going to happen no matter how careful we are um, then you could actually cause some problems with some nutrient deficiencies and things around your plants which is why I mainly recommend using them around the trees and the shrubs and things but they do work very well the next one is going to be grass clippings. This is actually a very effective method when it comes to weeds because they mat together really, really tightly and they keep the soil um, from getting warm from the sun, which can be a good thing because that helps keep the, the seeds, the weed seeds from germinating. And it also cut, like makes such a tight mat that if anything tries to grow, it can't get through it. So, and it's free if you have a yard or whatever, or a grassy area that you're already mowing, you're going to have all these grass clippings already anyway, so you just take them out, you dry them first, make sure you dry them first, and then you put them into your garden, um, and then it can help keep down the weeds. The main thing you want to watch out for with this one, though, is that if your grass has gone to seed at all, and you take it out, dry it, and then put it in your garden, you're effectively planting grass in your garden, which can be worse than any weed. So it can make a problem that you already have amplified. So be very, very, very careful if you're going to use this method. Make sure that it, your grass has not gone to seed at all. Um, and if it has, make sure not to use that particular grass for it. The next one would be leaves. You know, our leaves fall from our trees in the fall. We have to rake them up anyway. You know, there's several things we can do with them. We can add them to our compost pile or whatnot. If you keep them and you add them to your garden, you can use them as a mulch to keep the weeds down also. The main problem I have with leaves is that they mold even worse than the straw. So personally, this is not my favorite method, but it is free and it's available and it can work um, if you need it to. But definitely not in a setting where you get a lot of rain. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a lot of moldy leaves in your garden, which is not a good thing. And then the last mulch that I have to talk about today will be pine needles. Pine needles have been a great mulch for me because I put them in my, my berry garden here in Colorado, we have really acidic soil, and so it actually, or excuse me, alkaline soil. Most of the country has acidic soil, so if you have an acidic soil in the area where you live, definitely don't use pine needles. Um, but where we live here, where it's actually alkaline soil, by adding pine needles to the tops of the soil, it actually helps to make the ground more acidic. So it's actually really helped a lot with my berry garden, keeping you know the pH just right for it to grow and it's really helped a lot. The only problem I have with the pine needles is that they're really sharp and pointy, so when you go to pull weeds and things like that, they can really beat up your hands. So make sure you have a good pair of, you know, leather gloves or something if you're going to be weeding the area where you have pine needles. And so the, there's those, excuse me, those are the main mulches. 
um, that people use and some of the benefits and drawbacks of each. The next um, method I want to talk about is actually plastic. Plastics are probably the main choice that people that are using um, like farmers and things use to keep it down because it's readily available and it's really inexpensive and easy to use. So you just buy plastic in a big roll or something like that, sometimes it's folded, you unroll it and then you use some garden staples or pins to hold it down. It makes it to where the, gar the um, area where you're trying to keep the weeds can't grow because it gets absolutely no sunlight because it really blocks that sunlight really good and it also helps to block a lot of the water. So the two things that weed seeds really need to germinate can't happen. So um, there are two different kinds of colors that they mainly come in. Black, which is a good choice if you don't have a lot of really full sunny days. If you, do, if you do have a lot of sun, you probably don't want to go with black plastic because it might get too hot and it might burn the plants that are near it. The second color is going to be red. Red is a good choice because it doesn't get too hot unlike the black, um, but it can um, still keep the weeds down effectively. and in addition, it also um, helps attract pollinators, which is a good thing. The color kind of attracts bees and things like that. So those are um, the good things about it. The main problem with plastic is that you, when you pull it out at the end of the year, because it really only lasts maybe one season, then you have something to have to throw away, and so there's that waste factor. Plus it's petroleum-based, so for those people that are um, environmentally minded, this may not be the most uh, you know, ideal choice. So there's plastic and all the ups and downs to those. And then the next one would be paper or cardboard. This works really good if you're trying to make like a pathway or something like that and you want the area to be completely weed free. You can just throw it on top of the ground and then cover it with whatever it is you want, like mulch and use a combination of things to help keep those weeds down. The main way that I use this is when I'm using it for a garden bed, like I'm making a new raised garden bed. I'll build my garden bed, set it on top of the soil, put the, pla the, excuse me, not plastic, um, the cardboard or paper um, in the area where the garden bed is going to be filled with the soil first. I'll put the soil, or the plastic, why do I keep saying plastic? The paper or the cardboard inside of the garden bed and then fill it with the soil after that. And then that makes it so the weeds can't grow up from where the ground was in through my garden bed and up. So this works really well. I really like this method. And then it does break down over time, so it's useful. Um, in that way too because it can help feed the worms and things like that which is definitely a good thing and it's basically free I mean all of us have cardboard boxes and papers and things like that so you know uh, environmentally minded and um, inexpensive the next one I'm gonna talk about is shade shade is actually a really effective way to keep the plants from growing just like all of these other things I've been talking about with the mulch and the plastics and things like that it basically keeps the Sun from reaching the area where the plants are growing because everything needs at least some sun in order to grow for the most part. So if you have other garden plants that are growing really big and strong, you know, you can help shade out those other plants. Or if you have like a tree or some other thing planted in the area, it can help keep the ground shaded so that you don't, you don't end up with all those weeds. So if you're going to be, you know, um, taking care of your weeds and things like that, doing it in the early um, summer and the spring and stuff like that, helping to where your garden plants are already flourishing, then it makes it so the weeds can't really grow. They're being choked out by the plants you do want to keep. So this is actually a very effective method, just shading them out to where they can't grow in the first place. Um, the next method is going to be pulling them out. This is one of my favorite methods. I really like pulling weeds, um, but I know not a lot of people do. So um, there are a lot of different tools and things you can use. They have this little I don't know what, what to call it, but this little tool that kind of looks like a screwdriver, but it's not flat at the end. It has this little two-prong thing. You can kind of dig down into the soil where the weed is growing, and then you can actually pull it out by the root. Or you can just grab it with your um, gloves on or whatever and just pull them right out. And pulling the weeds out by the roots can really be an effective method at keeping the, the weeds from growing. It helps instantly. I mean, the moment you pull it out, the weeds are gone. It doesn't take too much time, and plus you can have the opportunity to use the weeds for something else, like maybe you can feed them to your livestock or something like that. So I really like this method. The next method can go hand in hand with this last method, and it's a vinegar spray. You can either spray your weeds with vinegar, or well, the way I actually prefer to do it is if I pull the weed out, I'll use full strength vinegar in the area where the weed was growing. So it, this really helps, especially if I haven't gotten the whole weed um, by the root and everything. 
if I am trying to weed when it's, say, dry, you know, because the weeds do come out a whole lot better and easier when it's wet out, when it's just rained or whatever, um, and I don't get the whole root, then I'll just go ahead and spray some vinegar on there, and it makes it take a whole lot longer before the weeds finally come back. So this is actually fairly effective. Or in areas where, you know, you have other um, plants growing, you can spray the vinegar. Um, just be careful because it does burn the plants that you want to keep. So make sure you're spraying it, you know, discriminately and make sure it's not going to get on other plants that you want to keep. So I personally don't use the vinegar method in my garden area. I'll use it in other areas where I have like rock and things like that where I don't necessarily want to keep um, or I have other plants that I want to keep around. The next method is going to be boiling water. I really like this method. If I've already done some canning or something like that from, you know, the summer produce I have and whatnot, um, I'll just have a whole pot of extra boiling water. You pour that on your weeds, like in a rocky area where you have no plants that you want to keep, of course. Um, you can actually make it to where you burn the root systems of the plants and then they die. It does take about a day before you really notice the results. Um, but it is very effective and it's a very green method because it's just water. There's nothing to pollute the environment or anything like that. So um, this is a really good method. Uh, very effective as well. Um, <laughs> the next one is fire. I used to go around my yard where the um, flowers, you know those weed flowers, dandelions, are growing the white puffy ones and I used to burn them with, the fi with my uh, lighter. And it burns the seeds to where if it does drop the seeds, they can't grow. It really helps a lot, but there are better, more effective methods than this. Um, you know those little torches that you can add to a propane tank and things like that? You can burn the weeds and make it to where they basically die. Um, of course, this uses propane and whatnot, but it is kind of an effective and fun way to do it, though. <laughs> so there's another method. And then my last method is going to be a homemade, like, spray. Make sure that you use this spray only in an area where you don't want other plants growing. The only area in my yard where I use this is my driveway. My driveway uh, slopes downward toward the road and the alleyway and things, and so if it ever rains and gets on that area where the driveway is, and it takes some of this spray with it, it's going to go out and into the road. It's not going to be in my garden, which is actually uphill from this. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not using this in your yard or garden where you have any grass or anything that you want to keep, any kind of plants that you want to keep. Um, it's going to be a totally indiscriminate method that's going to just kill everything. So be, very, so be very careful with it. But what I do is I take like a sprayer, one of those um, pump sprayers, and I add one gallon of vinegar and then one cup of salt and then one tablespoon of dish soap. All three of these things work together to kill the weeds just like a weed and grass killer that you would get from the grocery store, one of the chemical types, but this is obviously chemical free. The vinegar burns the foliage of the plants and keeps it from um, continuing to grow like it is. The salt actually gets into the soil and it causes the roots um, to not be able to absorb, excuse me, the uh, water and the nutrients and things like that. And so it persists in the soil as well. So you want to be very careful. Um, so the salt gets into the roots and then it kills the weeds from that angle. And then the dish soap also helps to kill the foliage of the plants. So basically the three things work together to kill the top and the bottom of the weed, kill it gone, and also keep them from growing back. So this is actually very effective, but again, be very, very careful that the area you're using it in is not anywhere near other plants that you want to keep or downhill, you know, down, you know, if it were to rain or something like that to where it could take the salt with it and then you end up not having um, plants that you wanted to keep. So those are my eight favorite ways to keep your yard and garden weed free, um, all of which were chemical free. None of them involved going to the store and getting Roundup or some other awful chemical. And um, they're all very effective. So depending on where in the area you, you know, of your yard you want to use it in, whether it's your garden or a pathway or your driveway or whatever, Hopefully you'll find one of these methods um, that'll work for you and try them all out and see what works best for you. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm Frugal Green Girl and we'll see you next time.